Storm deposits vary depending on how close they are to the shoreline. The shoreline is where most of the sediment gets eroded and as you go farther away from the shoreline less sediment gets delivered to that environment. The water is also deeper which means that the waves and currents influence the bottom of the bed less. So let's draw an example stratigraphic column for deeper water. The uh, mud-sized grains uh, still accumulate uh, between storms with some burrowing. When the storm comes, the, the flow might not be fast enough uh, to be erosive, and it's mostly the fine to very fine sand that makes it out uh, this far. So that can accumulate, and it uh, often has that hummocky cross stratification, and sometimes it has those wave ripples on top. Right, so then mud uh, accumulates again, and another storm comes, and maybe the there's even less sediment that accumulates with a little bit of hummocky cross stratification. Again, mud accumulates. And maybe this time they're, the waves are large, but there are fewer currents, and you end up with the wave uh, rippled cross lamination. Mud accumulates again. Maybe there's a little bit of uh, fining upward in this particular bed with some hummocky cross stratification. Okay, so I drew this particular um, stratigraphic column with the same number of sandstone beds as uh, the other one. And so, uh, usually you can't correlate individual storm beds, but one of the things that happens with the storm deposits is that as you go closer to shore, to offshore, the characteristics change. So, a bed that actually has mud class at the bottom, a good finding upward sequence, is really quite thick, can have a significantly different set of characteristics uh, further offshore. It usually has um, as a smaller deposit, a finer grain deposit um, through time, and often less erosion at the bottom. And in the case of these three storms that are stacked on top of each other in the shallow water deposit, in, if you look in deeper water, you can see that I've drawn it with the, the shale in between them. Right? So, so offshore, you end up still with the mudstone or shale accumulating, whereas in a nearshore environment, that's eroded away. So what this means is that the nearshore record, because there's erosion, there are gaps in the rock record. There, there are intervals of time where uh, rock is uh, missing and not representing that time. If you go to the other direction, um, closer to shorelines, there's typically a lot more erosion and a lot um, coarser grained uh, deposits. So let's say we're just below normal wave base, so we can accumulate some mud deposits, but when a storm comes, there's, there's pretty extensive erosion, and a lot of the sediment that's onshore actually get, can get transported offshore into these sorts of environments. So maybe 
there's actually some conglomerate in this, in this lower part of the storm bed, some large clasts. But the um, hummocky cross stratification doesn't form until the grain size is fine to, to very fine. Right. And so maybe you accumulate some hummocky cross stratification um, and then there would be wave ripples and maybe a little bit of mud between storms, but we're in a shallow enough environment that the storms are often very erosive, the bottom, and maybe this one has a, a pretty significant amount of conglomerate. And uh, so we'll put in our conglomerate here. You have the hummocky cross stratification when they're both currents and waves, but maybe there's a lot of strong waves and we end up with a lot of wave reworking of the sediments at the top here. Uh, another storm, maybe this one isn't quite as um, erosive. Let's not leave a gap in our time frame here. This one might have a lot of currents and a lot of the hummocky cross stratification in the upper parts. And these can vary as well. Maybe this time there's just the conglomerate before another storm comes and erodes it away. Okay. So in this particular case, our storm deposits are almost always erosive at the base. And between each storm, there is deposition, but almost none of that is uh, preserved. Almost none of the deposits between storms are preserved in the rock record because of that erosion. So we have these storm deposits going across different environments, and the characteristics of them are different, uh, with the offshore ones being thinner in general, finer grained, less erosion, and the onshore ones being, on general, uh, coarser grained, um, and often with uh, more conglomerate. So we can look at the, the characteristic aspects of these deposits, and in general, Storm deposits uh, fine upward. Um, they can have an erosional base. They, by definition, almost always have the hummocky cross stratification. And they often have wave ripples. Yeah. So almost always, because storm deposits reflect the uh, waning of the storm as it leaves, you, you have this fining upward and the sequence of structures through time are the erosional base with or without conglomerate then the hummocky cross stratification, which requires both the waves and the currents, followed by the wave ripples at the top. And depending on how much gets eroded, uh, there's often uh, mudstone deposited uh, between storms. Yep. So the really key aspect to look for storm influence deposits is this hummocky cross stratification. Thanks for watching.